hard question to answer, but it seems like you all have done a great job of keeping balls alive, keeping possessions alive, flying in from the perimeter to kind of get those loose rebounds. How do you, do you guys track that, or how do you all maybe account for for those types of things in your evaluation? Well, Stephen's really good at it. You know, that's one thing that helps. He's, he does a really good job of um, you know carving out space while shots are being attempted. Um, the, the other part of it, you know, the, the better ball movement you have, the more you put the defense in scramble situations, the easier it is to offensive rebound because what happens is your block out assignments, you know, get altered. Um, and when you've had good ball movement, you know, like we had really good ball movement, I think Patrick Pass missed a corner three, Russell was able to come in and dunk the ball. You know, they were in a scramble situation, so Russell's man was in a different position, having to block somebody out, gave Russell a free run in there. So. The, that, that's what happens. I think really, really good ball movement helps your, your offensive rebounding, and I think Steven's really good at it. Russell's good at it. Um, and, you know, when we have the opportunity to go, we, we try to go. How much have you seen the just the, the amount of increased three pointers in the NBA change? I mean, obviously, the style of offensive rebounding has changed in the last 15 years, but how have you seen specifically three pointers and just there being a long, more long rebounds and that kind of stuff change the way teams scheme for offensive rebounds? Well, I mean, you know, one of the things you try to do is, you know, if you're, you know, a lot of times because of the spacing now, you're holding corners. You know, you're generally going to have two players um, in each corner. Um, you know, and, and, and those players, you know, when shots go up, running through the elbows to get back, you know, is something that uh, sometimes those rebounds kind of come out to the free throw line. And sometimes you can scoop up a couple. Um, that's one thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, is it's it's hard to rebound three-point shots just because most guys' tendency is when the shot goes up, goes up, is to go towards the basket, and generally, you know, those those three-point shots are longer rebounds, and it probably creates more opportunities for guards to pick up a lot of loose balls. It seems like Dre picks up a bunch the way that you just described, kind of either running up from the wing or the corner mm -hmm. back through the free throw line. Yeah, he, he does. He, he's really good at it. And, and I think the other thing, too, is it's always a little bit easier offensive rebound when you're on the weak side because most of those shots are coming off from the weak side. So, you know, anything that's above the break or in the corner, you're on the back side, you, know, you have pretty good vision of, okay, is my man blocking me out? <clears throat> What's the balance of the floor? What's the flight of the ball? And, like, what kind of angle can I take to maybe go get it? Um, so you're, you're at an advantage of doing that, you know, and, and Andre's always been a great offensive rebounder. He, he was a great rebounder in college, and he's really good at slashing in there and, 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 and you know, getting some tip-ins and keeping keeping extra possessions alive for us. Well, yeah, I don't know, you know, I don't know exactly what to make of this, but for 29 games, you guys were one of the worst offensive teams in the league in the third quarter, and these last six games, you're literally, I think, the best, and you're shooting better than anybody else. Is that just a matter of making shots? Is there a, a different focus, a different approach at halftime? Anything changed? One, it's a small sample size. Mm -hmm. You know, two, I think we got to, you know, keep continually talk about that and be consistent, you know, in that. Um, I do think in some of the games, you know, prior to this, we've had maybe sizable leads going into halftime, and um, our pace of play is not has not been good. We've talked a lot about that. Um, talked about you know really trying to get out in fast break or even if it's a made basket, pushing the ball down the floor. Um, I, you know, I think the other thing too is bringing it to the guys' attention. And like like I said before, these, these guys have been great guys. I mean, in terms of you bring things, you show things, you point things out of areas where you get better, and they really try to put their best forward to get better. Um, but again, you know, can we do it consistently? And we've done it for five games, but you know, we're 30 plus games into the season, and um, you know, five out of 30, two, three, four games, whatever it is right now, it's not great. <laughs> you know, it's not. But we've done it here of late. Right. And you know, like tomorrow's another test. You know, can we can we play a full 48? Can we play consistently? And that's what you want to do is be able to build the stamina to be able to play 48 minutes. And I do feel, give our guys credit, they have done a good job the last five or six games. Like I feel like we were moving in that direction and doing a better job of playing the full 48. Whereas maybe in November, you know, beginning of December, we were not doing that. And. Um, Hopefully, we, we can create some consistency on that part. You say bring it to their attention. Is that something you would talk about? Saying that Absolutely. Look at these, like out, out of halves, this is how we're Yeah, playing. I mean, you know, coming out of Denver game, you know, same thing happened up by eight or wherever it was, and the lead goes right back down, lose the lead. Um, yeah, I mean, we've talked about that a lot in the locker room, especially at halftime. Like, listen, the first, you know, three or four or five minutes here of this quarter, we've got to set, 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 set a tone and you know, we got to play to how we want to play. We, we can't get, you know, stagnant and complacent and can't walk the ball up the court. And we got to play with pace. We got to play with tempo. And 
Um, you know, I think sometimes, you, you know, you, you, you come out of half it's a little bit different. A lot of times you're kind of easing your way back into the third quarter, and we just can't ease our way into the third quarter. We got to come into the third quarter, I think, running and moving. Um, and I do think for these guys, in fairness to them, I do think the halftime's a bit different. You know, the clock's running right as the horn sounds. Um, right when the, there's a minute left to go on the, on, on the clock, the, the horn's sounding. You know, so it's a little bit, you know, that, you know, and then you're coming out of a halftime where I'm talking to them as, co as a coach, and there's a lot for them to process, and then they got to get ready to play. And I think some of that's probably been a little bit different for them. So hopefully we're adjusting to be more consistent there. With as many loose balls, not loose balls, as many deflections as you all create, is there a way that you practice getting the loose balls, or is it more so just guys just being athletic or, or, or quick to getting to them or creating them? Getting to them because you guys create a lot of deflections. And um, loose balls. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that's instinctive. Like I've said this before, like I've, the best guy I've ever seen is Russell in loose balls. I mean, he's just incredible. He has an incredible ability. First of all, his athleticism, his speed, but just his awareness and, and the, the break that he makes on the ball is really, really good. Paul's an interesting guy because his deflections a lot of times lead to steals. He's so long that he can deflect balls and then steal it. Um, you know, Andre's a, another good you know, deflection guy. Um, I, th I think our guys have an idea of when deflections could possibly occur for us. So they're probably a little bit more on edge or ready to, to maybe figure out what passes could be potentially deflected and where they could potentially go. Um, but you, you got to have guys that are good at that. You know, I mean, we've got guys that are really good at that. Billy Russell, you talked about him being a catalyst last night. And it's been about two weeks now where he's worked very consistently inside the three-point line more. And I know you talk about his mid-range game off. And how does it affect the other four guys on the floor when he's operating so much more inside the three-point line? In terms of, like, what do you mean? How's it? How's it affect them in terms of not just their production, but but how they play, how, how you guys run your offense when when he's playing from inside the arc or getting to inside the yeah, arc. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how it would affect them. Um, you know, it would, it's it would be the same thing if he, you know, instead of stopping at 14 to 15 feet, drives to the basket. You know, the floor is spaced for him to get to the teeth of the defense there, and then he's obviously making those decisions. But it's it's not affecting any of the guys. Um, you know, I think he's done a great job, Russell, of taking what the defense has given him. And, um, you know, we, he's, he's, he's shot the ball at a really, really high clip. And he, but I also think he's taken good shots, too. And I think that's why he's been so efficient. So I don't think it necessarily impacts the – I don't see it impacting the other players. Anybody else? Thank you, Coach. Thanks, All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.